operator error. You know, that same idiot that runs the camera seems to do a pretty good job killing our audio at times, too. Well, the Dashers are going to win the faceoff here to start the game as they're controlling it comfortably in their defensive zone. You don't want to rush into things too hard because in a wide open game is where things can get a little bit troublesome. Nick Gullo behind there tries to find his winger but unable to bring it back here. Alcrete's going to run the other way with it. Nathan Margit's bringing it. It's going to have a hit there, but it doesn't make it as far as hardly wide as it's scooped up by Alex Palmerville. It's back down into the crease for Battle Creek. On it now is Brad Denny. He's going to try and pull this one out. He's upended there a little bit as it's instead going to come to number 39, Nigel Slade, a recent acquisition for the Dashers. Coach, really excited how the newcomers have meshed really well with the Dashers' offense and defensive schemes. I am hearing that the sound is still bad, so we're going to... And we're trying to bring this up here with the audio, so it's still a work in progress. Let me know if it's going to work, if there's any change. We can't really tell because I can't really watch it, which is unfortunate, but that's what you get with live TV. Really just trying to 
figure out what exactly went wrong with this device. Absolutely, and 
And uh, Coach was a little worried about this, uh, talking about how the team has played real tough in every single game this year, but it has these little two to three minute times during just about each and every game where they lose control on the defensive end and have given up some easy goals. In on the faceoff here, Danville almost has a shot go into the wide left part of the net, but Battle Creek just a little bit wide on that attempt. Hoagland unable to win that puck back there from number 12, Cody Lampo. Now the Dasher's on the other end of it. It's Palmerville carrying it across the ice. Palmerville going across his own blue line without anybody stepping up to him. He's going to dump it into the zone there for number 61, Christers Bormanis. Already seen a lot of time in his first home game as a Dasher after being acquired through trade. Fred Hine going to chase this one down. Ends up on the other end of it. Almost finds a pass there to Johan Hoagland, but it's taken by Battle Creek instead. That one is softly turned over. A stretch pass to Hine almost found, but instead the Dashers elect to regroup on their own ice. Now coming with it is Bormanis. Bormanis dropped to Fred Hine. Hine with shot. It's swallowed up there. Almost put back in net off a rebound as just unable to grab it with Jacob Mullen. That one's fired in by Murray as that was almost redirected by Bormanis into the net. Tessa Guerrero fighting for it really hard now as it's brought back around there. It's going to find number 29, 49, Richard Seidel. Dashers keep pulling it out on offense. It's only a matter of time before they find the net. That one was cleanly kept in the blue zone there by number 71, Seth Ensor, but it's lost anyway. The Battle Creek's going to find this one through. Trying to find number 14, Phoenix McElroy Scott. No such luck on that as that's finding a lively shot, and it's swallowed up by Jacob Mullen. Dashers doing a great job so far of, of getting the transition game going and quickly beating Battle Creek back to the offensive side, but again, can't cash in. We're tied one apiece with 11.51 left in the first. And coming down the stretch here of the first period, 11.51 left to go in the first. Ones are wild. First period, a score of 1-1. One to one. We need to get another stop at the 11-11 mark. That would be perfect. That would be perfect. We had that happen a couple weekends ago, if I do believe I am right, or something similar to that. Palmerville's going to dig this one out. It's going to go all the way back there to number 68, Logan Hoggood, another new acquisition from the Dashers. A nice play there from Palmerville. It's going to start an offensive opportunity. Pesterero carrying it in. Pesterero tries to dump it off, but just not quite on the same wavelength where the Dashers. Instead, Palmerville going to drop this one down. And it's played with a high stick there by Battle Creek. Brought back by Danville, though. Almost recovered, and nobody can get a handle on this puck. Did someone put Vaseline all over it? Bouncing puck. Uh, shots fired on Harley White. I think it nipped the backside of the netting, but that's not the right side that you want to hit as Battle Creek has another offensive opportunity. Dumps down into the back of the ice, threaded through, almost finds Susie with a shot as it's stopped up by Zylak. A shot finds the back of the net. That one went in, bounced off the back of Harley White after hitting the stick of, I do believe, number six, Nathan Markets. That's one of those in the right place at the right time and getting a very lucky bounce. But it counts just the same as a beautiful uh, you know, slap shot from the point. That it does. And with any indication, it looks like we're going to have a high-scoring game here, Dennis, wouldn't you say? Yes, we are. And it looks like we're also going to have a goalie change here. Oh, yeah. Jesse Gordachuk in a game that Danville cannot afford to lose. Ray Trombley, that's a heads-up decision there. You know, you always feel bad pulling a goalie early on. But he was out there, he had his chance with the start tonight, and he'll get a few more starts along the way, because we know Harley's a great goaltender, and he's going to have a lot of chances down the line. It's been a little tough for this team, because they really haven't had a lot of ice time to practice, didn't get their home ice back until Monday of this week. That's a lot of time to be missing practices. Yeah, and it's tough when you come off of that, you don't have the ice time, and goalies especially, you got to get a feel for what standing in front of the net is like. No amount of bouncing those tennis balls off the wall you the same experience as in-game experience. Bringing it down the ice, that was Nigel Slade. It's passed over to Nick Gullo. We're seeing a lot of different... Oh, that's a shot on net there. Almost hits off the glove of Mullins and finds its way in. Instead, it's back behind the goal. Nahir almost finds the end of that one. Instead, now Hoagland on it. Hoagland fires across there as the Dashers regain some speed. Gullo in. And Gullo almost threads the needle there. Puts the dash 
archers in on net, but no such luck. A slap shot from the point there is redirected by number seven, Susie Vinny. Vinny Susie. The man with two probable first names. Now coming across now is Lampo. That one's fired across there. Back, I do believe it's Susie. Coming across here, Jesse Mayhair is going to flick it down there to number 39, or 39, Nigel Slade. Wow. Man, that was a rocket up shot. Just bounced off the pads of Jacob Mullen. We're going to see a hooking call. I'm not sure exactly who it's on just yet. As it looks like it is going to be on Ryan Alves, the former dasher, and already a goal scorer tonight. Another good opportunity for the dashers on the power play. They've been cashing in at a very regular rate. And now we're on the Jenna Worth Power Play, sponsored by your State Farm agent Jenna Worth, located in Indiana and in Illinois. Get a hold of her for all your insurance needs. Now coming down the ice as the Dashers look to gain back a tight game. They're falling here early to Battle Creek. On it there in the corner was Nigel Slade. Palmerville now with a shot from the point, almost redirected in there by number 68, Logan Hoggood. Number 61, Christopher Formanis actually in on that one. Hoggood back on defense. Coming in now, Palmerville, as we see a line change also in there. It's going to be number 61, Christopher Formanis staying on the ice. Hine tries to do it all himself, dribbles through, comes on in. He's looking for a pass as he almost finds one there. Instead, it's broken up by just a mass of bodies. Hine back on it now. Hine over to the corner, tries to find Nigel Slade, but no such luck as that one's going to be dumped harmlessly as Battle Creek gets some fresh legs on the ice. Palmerville now to Hine. Hine throws it down into the corner. It's going to be picked up by Jesse Nahair. Nahair carries Buck. He's going to be having it at the point there. A uh, shot on net attempted by Johan Hoagland. He can hit those. Don't doubt him. That is passed in there. Ending up on the stick of Formanis. Formanis almost sets Hine up with a beauty, but it's blocked nicely by Battle Creek. Gordichuk now in the game for Danville. Gets a few touches in on the Buck. That's always a good thing to see early on in your ice time when you come in early on in the game in reserve. Jesse Nahair coming back now. Nahair passes it to Hoagland. Hoagland's to content to carry. Hoagland with a near shot, but a stick gets tied. Jesse Nahair bringing it down now. Hoagland with a shot on that, and that one bounces right off of Mullen. And that's got to be the key right now for the Dashers. Put as many shots on net as you can with this high-velocity offense. Nahair now carries across the blue line. He's going to find the stick of Murray. Murray passes it into the corner here. He's going to find Nahair again. Eventually back to Nahair as he finds Murray again. Palmerville over to the creek, but instead a shot. Oh, he almost sets him up open side for Palmerville, but Palmerville unable to get a clean stick on it. This one's going to be passed back around as the penalty against Battle Creek expires. 7.48 left to go in the period here in the first. Battle Creek player did not come out of the box. Ooh. We have a no goal. I don't know. We're going to see how this one gets sorted out, Dennis. What did you see? Boy, I thought that was in. Dashers with a rocket of a shot that I thought beat the goaltender. But they're waving off the goal, I think. But again, the, the uh, Battle Creek player was late leaving the penalty box. We're going to have a media timeout here. Under 10, that is a no goal there. As I did get a clear look on it, trying to maintain control of that penalty. But nonetheless, we're seeing a game that looks like it's going to be filled with offense. It's going to be a big offensive game. And that's uh, it's kind of rare for Battle Creek. They've only been averaging about 1.9 goals a game, and they're already at two goals for tonight. Holy White just had a rough start to this game. There was no doubt about it. One goal, arguably not his fault in any way, bounces off your back. You don't really get an extra glove there. But bad positioning maybe is what the, what Coach was not happy with, uh, being out of the goal and away from, from the back of the net there. Um, whatever it was, boy, Coach reacted very quickly after that second goal. He was not happy with something he was seeing tonight. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. It was a quick reaction and a very early reaction, not even 10 minutes into this first period. Now coming out of the media timeout, 7.43 left in the first period. That was no goal, just saw before the break there. As we got a little clarification, but it could have gone either way from that. And as always, we don't have instant replay, so not really uh, 
much you can do about that one if you're either side, huh? I'll watch the stream back and see if that cameraman got a good shot of it. It might not be the cameraman's fault, it might be the camera. <laughs> now carrying it out here is Adam Howie. As that's turned over to the Dashers, it's slung all the way down into the Dashers' offensive zone. Not going to be icing, though, as it's touched up early. Now on it is Barakov. Barakov Zylak with a backhanded shot that goes just wide of the net. Palmerville able to recover with it as Zylak unable to get a stick on it. Now Palmerville again fires it down about seven feet into the air past the goal. On it now is Barakov. And Battle Creek coming the other way on the break with it is number 21, Jimmy Philbin. Dashers have been dominating this game in the offensive end, but it's just kind of a weird way that the puck bounces their trail here. We have definitely seen some interesting bounces. The Stanville almost has a breakaway, but it's broken up nicely by Battle Creek forwards. That one's dumped in as Dashers going to get some fresh legs out there. Battle Creek now recovering, carrying it in, and it's out there to Philbin. Or no, actually, Tony Lampo. As that one's to the point, the point shot is redirected sky high, almost to the roof here, off the stick of Gino Mini. That one cleared the Dishman's inflatables banner up on the wall. That's about the highest I've seen a puck hit around here. Yeah, that one was a skyrocket, and it just hit the stick. They're the right way to get all the way up there. 6.30 left in your first period. Taking the face off here is Marco Luciani for the Dashers. Now with Hoagland behind the net. And carrying it across here are the Dashers. That was Logan or Seth Ensor, excuse me. Back on the defensive side of things. With a nice body check to free that puck up or the Dashers are gonna throw it in. Nick Gullo almost finds himself open side. Nothing he could do with it as the Battle Creek Rumblebees are right on top of it. Gino Meany is gonna go to the box for tripping as soon as this puck stops. It does, and Meany is gonna find his way to the penalty box for tripping. That'll be the third time that Danville has been on the power play tonight. They actually lead the league going into tonight's action. They had drawn 53 minor penalties already. And that's a really pesky way to play, and it ends up benefiting you a lot in the long run. You can lay the boom, but also not get caught doing it too much. That goes a long way. Nigel Slade on the faceoff here as it finds Palmerville. Palmerville tries to shoot from the point, ends up hitting the back leg of Tanner Hildebrand. And now with it are the Dashers on the power play. Breaking it up nicely, there's Hildebrand. He's known to cause a stir behind the net, that's for sure. That comes out to Palmerville. Palmerville passes over to Fred Hine. Hine wearing the assistant captain now. Shot from the corner from Bormanis. Actually, Nigel Slade. Palmerville on the back on the point now with a shot that's almost redirected in on the net by the Dashers, but equal to the task, Jacob Mullen. He's done a great job corralling those redirects so far tonight. That one's going to be harmlessly passed out of the offensive zone as Battle Creek gets some fresh legs. Much needed here against the fast-paced Daniel offense. Fred Hine with the nutmeg between the legs of the Battle Creek defender who just lost his stick as well for good measure. Not a great way to go down on the defensive side of things. Johan Hoagland on the point now. Point to Hine. Hine shot off Mullen. Oh, almost redirected into the open net there off the rebound. What's the shot of Nigel Slade? Slade already having an early active game. Slade now on the puck now. Nobody was home at the point for the Dashers. That cost him the, the, some time off this penalty. 41 seconds left on the penalty here. Hoagland passes over to Zylak. Zylak content to carry. He drags it, almost tips it up into the net. Instead, it finds himself on the ground. And that one's to the point, a shot. And it's almost redirected in there. Murray almost ends up with a point. Every one of these shots seeming to find the pads of the uh, Battle Creek goalie so far. That's Rero to Murray to Hoagland to Murray with a shot. And it's redirected up into the netting off the stick of the Battle Creek defense. Yeah, for what it's worth, Jacob Mullen doing a great job at just stopping up the shots that he can. That's kind of all it takes, really. Sometimes you can only get your pads in front of it. And if they're not capitalizing on rebounds, that's all you need to do. Been very impressed with how he's done because the, the Dashers' offense has put out a lot of shots on net already. Yeah, they certainly have. Patrick Zylak in there in the faceoff circle along with number 12, Tony Lampo. Dashers corral it. That's going to be. 
be to Tesserero. Tesserero elects to shoot. It goes off the skate there. Number nine, Carnegie Burnett. Got a quick player in the penalty box. Was a little quicker getting ready to exit this time. Yeah, not going to take the chance of that happening again, I suppose. Yeah. Now on the shift change, Dasher's going to try and draw another almost penalty there. This one's going to find Tesserero, who's tied up there nicely by Ethan Bush Anderson. Now along the boards as Battle Creek is able to recover with it. On and now Tony Lampo. Lampo carries it through to find Alves. Alves back. Oh, almost finds an open point man there, streaking in to try and capitalize. But instead, it's going to be turned over here in the neutral ice a couple of times before it finds a stick of the Dasher defense. That one's poked through right on to Battle Creek as that slap shot was a rocket off the stick of Tony Lampo. Yeah, Artie did a great job of reading that play and uh, coming back and, and getting in the way of that pass into the front of the net, keeping that from being a big chance for Battle Creek. Without a doubt, in the face-off circle, as Battle Creek wins it almost has a shot from Meany, go on to net. Instead, it's going to end up with Nick Gullo. Gullo going to use the boards to get out of a sticky situation there. Hold on to it just too long as Battle Creek's going to have another chance here. Instead, Seth Ensor sees to the end of that. Now on the other end of it, as Danville comes around, Levi Armstrong finds a nice threaded pass through to his offense, but no such luck on that play. Brad Denny on it now over to Alex Palmerville. Or Nick Gullo, excuse me. So many mustaches now. No shave November. <laughs> you can't use that as an identifying tool anymore. Gullo ends up on the puck once again. A lot of work here done by Gullo. Barakov was on the end of it. We're going to come off for a shift change now. As we see a couple new faces come on. Christopher Manis now tries to does. Intercepts a nice pass there. Just does enough physically. As Fred Hine jumps it in. Hine going to end up with a chance as he elects to pass and instead finds the skate of Gino Mini. Not going to get much going with that. Dasher's almost caught with too many men on. Instead, Battle Creek going to have a chance. A shot is redirected up into the net. A lot of those shots ending up in the net so far tonight for both sides. When I was down by the locker room before the game today, I didn't notice, though, even though this is no shave November, trimming of beards must be allowed because I noticed a couple of the beards on the players shorter than the last home game we had. No shave, not no trimming. That's apparently the rule here. Tanner Hildebrand going to find his way to the box. They're not doing the announcers any favors, though. It's a little tough no, to identify not. these guys. No, and the, the numbers, actually, on Battle Creek's jersey is a little bit hard to read, but I guess that's why I get paid to do it, right? As we're going to get an official ruling on what Tanner hit went to the box for, but for now, just no Battle Creek with two minutes of a minor penalty here as the serve pro penalty kill comes around for the Dashers. Battle Creek threading the passes nicely here. And that one's back from the point to the corner. Carried on, eventually going to find Nate Martins, who makes his way into the back right corner here. On and now, Battle Creek passing it around nicely. The Dashers look to close a lot of passing lanes on the inside, but not so much the outside. Mar gets on it again here. That one is broken up nicely by the Dashers. Oh, very nicely saved by Battle Creek, but broken up by Tesserero. Great play by AJ. He took a little shot to the midsection. But he got that puck out. Just for the sake of giving credit where credit's due, that's Patrick Zylak in on that. Saw the seven, didn't know. Almost finds a stretch pass as it's going to be just barely offside thanks to the ricochet. Not going to be called those Battle Creek touches up instead of the Dashers. A sigh of exasperation there on the Dashers. Don't like to see that quite so much, especially when you have a breakaway. Jesse Nahert does a nice job at breaking up the play here as the Dashers get it outside of the blue line. Bush Anderson on it now, passing it back to number 12, Tony Lampo. Lampo very active here in the first period. One minute left in the first period, 42 seconds left of the penalty kill for the Dashers of the Surf Pro penalty kill. Now coming through with it is Battle Creek. That's number 88 there, Adam Howie on the end of it. Also up there, number 24, Mark Steele. Battle Creek almost has another nice offensive opportunity there. Instead, it's sought out by the Dashers who have 20 seconds left on this penalty kill. Battle Creek going to have to move fast here, and they do. Margins tries to dump it in instead. Daniel content to kind of sit back and it looks to kill this one off as Battle Creek actually going to get a change too and not really press too hard for the last 10 seconds. Finally, someone gets out there. It's McLean Scott. McElroy Scott. Man, 
That's Fred Hine going to find a last chance opportunity here. Hine in, in with the backhand, no goal, no such luck. Man, Jacob Mullen putting on a show after that first goal. Battle Creek with a shot in the last seconds, two seconds left on the clock as that one's going to find its way harmlessly down the ice to end the period. Battle Creek ahead at the end of the first period, two to one here in Danville.
like 700 degrees. Like, we're talking cremator temperature. Oh, wait. Did you hit the volume button? Dennis! I was talking! We're live now. That's embarrassing. I don't know how to cook a turkey. I was just lying to you. Welcome back, everybody. Danville Dasher's Hockey, Nate Williamson here with you, along with my beautiful co-host, Mr. D. Mike Dennis Michelson. Dennis, how you doing? Man, I'm telling you. We saw a crazy first period. And I'm hoping we see more of the biscuit going in the basket for the Dashers here in the second period. It started so fast, and then it just kind of petered off by the end of it. We are at 2-1 to one here in Danville. The Danville Dashers taking on the Battle Creek Rumble Bees, one of the newer expansion teams here in the FHL. FPHL having a little bit of a rough time to start the season, as is the case with a lot of expansion teams throughout history. However, making a lot of improvements. Obviously, they hold the lead here after a third of the way through the game on a pretty raucous crowd for a Wednesday night here ahead of Thanksgiving in Danville. Pretty good crowd tonight. Very good crowd here, as always. A great show. Yeah, Go with your doubt. hockey out here. Yeah. That's one thing I think that uh, Diane, the general manager, and everybody here from top to bottom does such a great job with the atmosphere. It's always a very fun place to be and regarded as a very fun place to play as well. Yeah, and, and the fans here, you know, they, they just get to know each other as the season wears on, and a lot of them spend a lot more time here than they do with their own family, I think, but uh, having a good time. But my goodness, Jacob Mullen, what a great job for Battle Creek in that first period between the pipes. Yeah, he did a fantastic job there. We saw an early goalie replacement, Jesse Gordichuk coming in for Harley White for the Dashers. See that? 
that one get tipped up over the board. Battle Creek thought it might have just straight up gone out off the stick of Hoggood. Hoggood took a big shot there as he was getting rid of it. Was hoping for that favorite penalty, the dog. But did get a little piece of the stick. That's the leg game for those not paying attention at home. Yep, not in this case here as the dashers come through. Almost turned over to Battle Creek as Artem Efimov Barakov unable to get a hold on it. That one's going to be slung down the ice there by Phoenix McElroy Scott. As far as Jesse Gordichuk, who passes it out, as that one's going to get almost out to a streaking dasher instead. Going to find the way back to Battle Creek as Battle Creek almost has an offensive chance. It's shot down once again. Logan Hoggood doing a good job at clearing that out to Barakov. Barakov, a victim of a huge shot, but stands nonetheless as the dashers almost get a shot on net. It's nicely broken up there by Battle Creek. That would be, I do believe, number 16, Gino Me. Starting to wonder if the ice is tilted. We saw all the action down at the Skybox end of the arena in the first period, and so far in the second, we're seeing Battle Creek having more chances down on that side of the ice. Stepping up to the faith off for the Dashers was 39, Nigel Slade, doing a lot of that so far tonight. Nick Gullo holds in the corner, does a nice job of getting out of that, holds with his stick as his stick is very tied up, very nice play from both sides there, carrying in front of net there, almost finds the lucky bounce, was Nigel Slade. Oh, almost shot on net as he finds the open net, but unable to capitalize was Nick Gullo. Good opportunity for the Dashers, they stop, got a chance here, bring it on. Denny carries it in now, it's going to be on the stick of Jesse Nahair who tries to go top corner, but Mullen bounces it off of his glove out of harm's way, and pass down to Nick Gullo, Gullo's going to carry in front of ice, find a point man, can't get a shot off, was number 91, Jesse Nahair. Going to be a lot of tired legs out there on this long ship. And we might have found a solution to that as Nick Gullo fires one all the way back down, plays a little catch with Jesse Gordichuk on accident. And it's not going to make its way back down to the other end of the ice there for number 61, Christopher Bormanis going after it. It's Hildebrandt, man, so fast, so strong as Hildebrandt comes in. Denny with it now on the point. Denny looking for an outlet as he's double teamed there on both corners. Does get it down the boards though to Bormanis, who's a nice pass through. Almost finds Asher, but no such luck on that. As that puck is broken up by Denny. Denny having an active shift here so far. Now Palmerville. Palmerville tries to find the outlet pass. It's broken up by Tony Lampo. Lampo does his best to carry it over there, but it's shut down and elects to get a shift change really quick here. Dasher's bringing it back down now. An outlet pass finds Tanner Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt passes it off to number 61, Christopher Formanis. Formanis to Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt to the point and shot score! Beautiful play by the Dashers! Fred Hine! Who else? And that was a very nice looking play. Good puck movement. Flipped it out front and Hine puts it in the basket. And we are back to a tie game here at the David S. Palmer Arena. Don't change that channel, folks. Let me tell you, this is shaping up to be quite a game here between the expansion Rumblebees and the Main State Dashers, one of the founding teams in the league. How's that for a storyline? Ninth goal of the season for Freddie. Fred Hine, current points leader here on the Dashers team. By a pretty wide margin, although a lot of scores on the sheet so far this season for Danville do a great job of getting out on the offensive attack. So far, haven't had a whole lot of luck, but they're threatening again. Seth Ensor with a beautiful carry. Barakov with a shot. Barakov rebounds out of the inside of the glove of Bolin, who just couldn't get it shut up. That's going to find the stick there of Zylak. Zylak to Barakov. Barakov carrying it through. Tries to find a front pass there through the blue zone. No such luck. Now on it was Xavier. Xavier turns it over there. As now it's going to find Phoenix McElroy Scott just, just as far as the dasher is there. That's going to come down for an icing. Another good play there by the dashers on the offense. But the Battle Creek defender staying home and cleaning, cleaning that puck up from the front of the net. But the Dashers all of a sudden have found some life on the offensive end. Well, and that's exactly what you want to see if you're the Dashers. Tessarero taking the face off against Maxime Noskov. Now carrying are the Dashers. Tries to funnel it down, does Alex Pomerville, but with no such luck. Pomerville could almost end up on the side of that one. No foul called on that. Baraka Tessarero actually. 
Bradley with a chance. Almost finds the backside of Mullen, but no such luck. Coming down now, the Dashers fighting to keep it in the offensive zone. On and out, Cesarero fires it out and tries to flip it up through the air to Tylak. A late slash there is going to go uncalled, as we've seen happen a couple of times. No real harmful intent in it, so you can kind of let it play in a league like this. Now, that was a pretty move. Uh, tried to kind of beat the goalie, thinking, make him think he was going around the, the uh, back of the goal and then try to stuff it in. Mullen was up to the task. Coming up now is the Dashers bringing it in to the blue zone. Coming out in the offensive zone, trying to fight for it here. Number 68, Logan Hoggood. Murray now going to bring it around as Murray finds a little bit of space here. Almost lets that one get past the blue line. Nope, it's kept in there though nicely by Hoggood. Coming around now is Patrick Zilek. Zilek throws it backwards here to Tessarero. Tessarero hooks up nicely with number 39, Nigel Slade. Almost finds an open net. In front of that guy. That was a nice slap shot. Jesse Nahair scores to put the dash to the head. 3-2. Beautiful play. Was engineered by 39, Nigel Slade. And that was an easy snap shot from right in front of the net. That one-timer finds space. And the Dashers with the lead. Very well worked and very well deserved. A lot of offensive pressure building there for the Danville Dashers. Nicely done. And they now hold the lead. It's 3-2 to two Danville here in Danville. Jesse Mayer with the goal there. As that one is controlled again by the Dashers. Almost turned over to Tony Lampo. This game could get chippy if it stays close or even if it blows wide open. You never know. Lampo misplays that one down the ice. As it looks like the Dashers are going to be able to recover through Brad Denny. Palmerville pokes that one out to number 61. Christers for Manis. Formanis gets to carry out. Finds Denny on the point. Denny hikes it over. That's Formanis on it with a shot. That's redirected there nicely by number 88, Adam Howie. Battle Creek defense just uh, giving up too much ground. And Dasher's just pouring it on. Howie almost finds a nice seam there and almost rips it open. Fred Hine open down the ice here. Skates into a double team. That one is not going to be fastly enough touched up by Hine and it's going to come back for an icing. 13-16 left in your second period. Good guys up 3-2. Dashers able to come back now, have trailed twice in this game. Now take the lead, their first lead of the game. And recovering that is Battle Creek as they push it back down as far as Jesse Kordachuk. Kordachuk coming in in replacement for White early on in the first period. And the late offside is Tanner Hildebrandt carries it down. Hildebrandt content to carry this one out, wraps around, loses control of the puck a little bit there. Instead, it's probably going to shoot from the point, actually. It's redirected off the pad of Mullen on a light shot there from the point. Hildebrandt ends up on it. Man, does he just touch the puck every possession. He is so active. Almost some nice stick work there from Barakov. He almost finds a space there to shoot. Instead, forced off it is Hildebrandt by Battle Creek. Battle Creek now able to recover through RJ Seguile. In points during this second period where the Battle Creek defense has gotten caught kind of standing around and the Dashers just kind of looping around, swarming, good puck movement. have gotten some real good chances here in the second period and cashed in twice. Face off circle, Tesserero against Phoenix McElroy Scott. Then start with a slap shot from the point. No such luck on that. As Battle Creek going to have a chance here to recover Xavier out there. He's played a lot of minutes in that left wing spot for Battle Creek so far tonight. A lot of tired legs going into the second period. You would think we've had some very long shifts from both sides. Enser does an accidental body shot to keep that one into the offensive zone. Now on it are the Dashers. The Dashers almost find Tessarero in front of the net for a chance. Instead, Tessarero fights on the boards. Hits it to Zylak and almost finds a looping pass through. Instead, Barakov forced to fight off. Zylak now on it again. We're going to have a stoppage here. Hand pass, I believe, was the call. That would make the most sense there in the back corner. That one's going to come. 
come back into the semi-neutral ice there, right next to the blue line on the offensive side for the Dashers. On this one for Battle Creek, it's going to be Nathan Margus, and it's won by Margus. They don't really contain possession for too long. This one's being fought for on the boards by the likes of Nick Gullo and a few other players. A shot there from Jesse Nair. Tries to make it two on the night. No such luck. Jacob Mullins up to the task on that one. When Mullen has had a clear view of the shot, he's been pretty good on those one-timers. It's when Danville's been able to, to get the pass across to the front of the crease to get him out of position when they've been able to cash in both times this period. And you got to think that's at least part of the reason we're seeing increased ice time for Tanner Hildebrandt, known to be a disruptor and a skilled disruptor at that. Gullo with a shot on is blocked there by number 24, Mark Steele. Bringing it back now is Battle Creek with threatening in the first period and a half. Looking to do the same here. As that's picked up there in the back by Tony Lampo. Lampo carries it around. He's going to find the stick of, man, these single digit numbers on these jerseys, let me tell you. Susie with a fire on this. As Danville recovers, it's a turnover in the offensive zone. We're going to have a breakaway here. Number 68, Logan Hoggard. And up to the task, Jacob Mullen, a near miss there for Danville. Puck was on edge. That was the only thing that helped save Mullen that time. Nair with a near shot into that corner. He's really, really targeting that upper left corner on the glove side of Mullen. And turned over dangerously in the offensive zone, but no Battle Creek Rumblebees there to make anything of it. Now coming is the new acquisition, Christopher Bormanis. Bormanis over behind. Two Bormanis had an open net, had it beat, but just a rough transition off the stick. Brad Denny's shot almost redirected in by Hildebrand. Speech of the devil. Hildebrand with a very active stick in front of the net. Hildebrand now on it again, almost on cue. Brad Denny on the point. Denny settles that one down nicely. Is going to have a shot up into the arms there of number 22, Ethan Bush Anderson. A lot of traffic in front of the net, but a good idea. Now coming in, 84, Carl Manson. Tried to force that one out, did Hildebrand. No such luck there as the Badgers are going to end up recovering it anyway. Fred Hine with a rocket off and an open net high and into the top. That is sealed easy as pie by Tanner Hildebrand. No chance at all for Jacob Mullen on that one. Tanner Hildebrand found himself wide open with the puck. An easy goal there for Tanner Hildebrand as he found himself without a man in sight on an island and just out deeks Jacob Mullen and fires sky high and goes far down. And that's exactly the type of goal you like here at home if you're the Dashers. Dashers starting to take full command of this game here with 9.49 left in the second. On the back end now, Johan Hoagland. Hoagland over to Seth Enser. Enser in as he finds Patrick Zylak. Tesserero on it now. Oh, and almost another beautiful chance there for Levi Armstrong. He throws a big hit on the end. And that five seconds can summarize Levi Armstrong for you. A great, talented offensive player who also likes to throw the boom, let me tell you. Yeah, I think that was a little frustration on missing the shot, so he, he got the shot in behind the net and again got possession and kept that offensive uh, play alive. Yeah, I think it definitely was a set end, so I'm getting a little talking to, a little explanation with the ref for why that puck's coming back. It looks like Battle Creek's going to send a man to the penalty box here. Is that a cross-checking or a roughing? R.J. Siegel going to the box. We'll get an official word on that from the box in just a minute here. If we had an official line, it'd be really nice, but we don't. Either way, it's going to be a dasher. This will be the fourth power play for the dashers tonight, I believe. They've cashed in twice already. And now we're going to get the media timeout. Yeah, we're going to get a media timeout here. And as the Dashers look to keep up the pace here with 9.25 left in the second period, they're also going to have a Chenoweth power play after we take a little break for the media timeout. Chenoweth, your State Farm agent, licensed in Illinois and Indiana. Make sure to get a hold of her for all your insurance needs. Thanks to Chenoweth for sponsoring the power play. Thanks to a lot of our sponsors. 
we can make this broadcast possible for you. Come up this weekend, November 30th, if you're keeping track and you don't know how to count three days ahead, that is Saturday. It's military night. Join us as we honor the men and women who serve our country. The Nashers will be wearing special jerseys. Let me tell you, those jerseys are beautiful. And those will be auctioned off and proceeds will be going to benefit veterans. Show your military ID at the box office. Get your tickets for five bucks. Sounds like a good time. It's a Saturday night in Danville. It'll be a fun time. I'm going to have to bid on one of those jerseys. They look pretty sharp. Yeah, and you can get some of them for a really decent price as well, considering how much it is to make them. Let me tell you, we tried to have custom hockey jerseys made once. Not our best plan. Financially, anyway. Not our best plan creatively. I think I'm going to put that on my Christmas wish list for the family. On it now, Adam Howie and Nigel Slade look like they're lining up to take the face off here. This looks like a whole nother Dashers team in this second period. A wide open shot there was Fred Hine on the point to open up the power play. Hine with a dangerous turnover there on the other end of it is Adam Howie. Howie on the breakaway. Howie with a misfire. Howie had a wide net there. I think, it's gonna, I think it was a hooking penalty here. I think you're, you're right on that. you got to do what you can to stop that. Technically, that normally would come back for a penalty shot, but I don't think we're going to see that. Not even sure that's an option, actually, in the FPHL. Instead, we're going to have a little bit of time, a four-on-four, about a minute and 47 to be exact, and then about 23 seconds, or 13, I can't count, 13 seconds worth of power play for Battle Creek. Four-on-four hockey, very, very fun. Steal on the point with a shot, easily swallowed up, seen the whole way by Jesse Gordachuk. Coming to the face-off circle here on the four-on-four four for the Dashers. Going to be actually number was probably Fred Hine out there taking it. I gotta assume. Actually, no, Christopher Corbanis. I assume Fred Hine would be taking that. Hine held a lot of that opportunity so far this year. Corbanis now carries through with some nice deep work. Find Hine to Corbanis. Corbanis with a shot that's redirected off the stick of the Battle Creek defenseman. There on it was number 22, Ethan Bush Anderson. Bush Anderson now is content to carry this one down. A little bit of slow legs from Battle Creek. A rocket of a shot from the point of Bush Anderson finds the glove of Gordachuk. Now open on the other end was Fred Hine. He almost had a breakaway. It was just a lucky stick bounce away from that as the puck just hopped over his stick. Roscoff passes over to Bush Anderson. Anderson with another rocket of a shot. If anyone was there for that rebound, it was open net on Jesse Gordachuk. Coming the other way, Fred Hine has a breakaway. Hine getting with a shot. It's swung up on board, but the rebound is put on by Fred Hine. Stayed right with that. Mullen giving up the rebound. And Freddie Hine tuck it in for the goal. And now the Dashers are up three. Well, we had a close game for a while. Can't say that's the case right now in Danville. Five to two for the Dashers against the Battle Creek Rumble Bees. Jacob Mullen was having a great game, but a lot of sloppy turnovers and a couple unfortunate rebounds that he struggled with earlier on in the game as well are letting him down so far tonight. Five goals let in already here about halfway through the second period. Eight, ten left to go as we still have four-on-four four hockey thanks to those penalties on both sides. And with the way the Dashers are winning these battles along the board, the four-on-four four hockey is actually going to be in their favor. And here they got the puck again. Well, in four-on-four four hockey, man, it's wide open, and that really favors the Dashers, let me tell you. This one is popped out of the top of the net and slapped off there by Mullen, a heads-up play to stop another face-off. Wrestling forward, it's going to come to the point. Out to Johan Hoagland. Hoagland, fake shot. Over to Murray, almost sends one into the upper net, but no such luck there. On the other end of that one, going to come down with it here is number, I do believe that would be Christopher Formanis again. Actually, no, it's not. It's Nigel Slade. A couple new additions really tripping you up. Murray coming around, and we're going to have a power play. Ten seconds worth for Battle Creek. They're going to have to work fast if they want to make anything out of it, though. Pretty unfortunate timing, if I do say so. Martin's fighting for this one along the boards with Patrick Zylak. Zylak, kind of a junkyard dog in that regard. He really fights for those loose pucks. Goldichuk really closely letting something dangerous happen there as he reached for the puck, but it's pucked away. Sticked away is this one he recovers and covers it with a glove. I thought maybe Hildebrand would kind of uh, charge out there and be ready for an open pass. 
Thomas has been headed right for the bench. Zylak is going to find the penalty box here. He tried to retaliate and drop the gloves. No such luck on that one. The Battle Creek player eager to take that power play opportunity to head back to its bench. That's a penalty the Dashers really didn't need. No, it's definitely not. As we head back here, it looks like Pine out there for the Dashers, along with number 61, Christers Bormanis. And we're going to have a power play. Two minutes of power play here for Battle Creek with seven minutes and three seconds left on the clock here in the second period. Dashers have been 78% successful in killing penalties so far this year. It's Patrick Zelock finding his way to the box there. And the Battle Creek going to end up with an offensive opportunity here as the Dashers get this one out on a breakaway. It's poor man. It's he just barely loses an opportunity there. The puck just barely played away from him. Meany fires it over here behind the net as Battle Creek's going to regroup. Now coming down the other end with it. And it's going to be carried into the zone here by Battle Creek. They're setting up on the other end. As that's played behind that shake Gary on the other end of it. A shot, a pass fired across the blue zone nicely there. Almost finds a goal for Battle Creek. Palmerville does a nice job. Almost links up with Fred Hine on the break. Hine can really get out there in open space. And man, when he does, watch out. So quick and also reads the play so well. Coming the other way with it is Battle Creek. Carrying over content is Tony Lampo. Lampo, one of the bigger offensive threats on this team, both uh, metaphorically and literally. Pretty big guy, but also some great offensive skills. Danville gets this one out. It's going to get as far as number 39. That would be Nigel Slade, one of the newcomers, almost finding his first goal, but instead Jacob Mullen equal to the task. Dasher's putting on a good performance here on the penalty kill. That's exactly what you need up three. You can't let any energy come back into this Battle Creek side. Lampo with it now. Lampo carries down behind the net. A rocket of a pass almost hooks up there with Owls. Coming back now are the Dashers. Going to have a two-on-one if they work fast. A shot just goes high of the net of Jacob Mullen. That one was off the stick of Nick Gullo. Battle Creek defender was just looking for the pass and let a, a good shot develop. Hildebrand out there. Hildebrand makes something happen. Looking for the Hattie on the night, but is quickly pushed off puck there by number seven, Vinny Susie. That's not an easy task. Zylak coming out. Hildebrand going to end up with a nice backhanded pass across the zone. Finds Nick Gullo. And that one's going to come back for an offside on Steph Enser. as an unlucky redirect there off the stick of, I do believe, Maxime Narkov. Jesse Nager was also caught offside there. He was kind of lost in the, in the big uh, defenders for Battle Creek. Armstrong out there on the ice again. Armstrong with a backhanded opportunity on Mullen. Doesn't get through, though. Armstrong now fighting for it on the board. Collects it in the midst of the chaos. And a backhanded shot almost finds back in the net for Baraka. Baraka been threatening a lot of limited time on the ice tonight. A deep rotation here tonight for Coach Ray Tremblay and the Dashers. <laughs> Levi's always been a great physical player, but every year he seems to get better offensively. Brad Denny with a shot from the point. Finds Armstrong with a nice threaded pass. Just unable to finish the trick and put the third part on the trilogy as they miss wide of the net. Tessarero here fires it through almost Armstrong, whose stick is tied up. Baraka down to Armstrong. Armstrong fighting for it on the boards. Just a matter of time before the Dashers cash in again. They are dominating play. And Baraka with a shot, going to rebound to Armstrong. Armstrong going to go off the leg of Minnie. A uh, nice pass there to Bormanis. Bormanis slots it through, almost finds Tessarero, but no such oh. luck. Battle Creek swarming on that one. Fun fully intended. Battle Creek happy to get a fresh set of players coming in off their hive. A dangerously blown pass there off Black Brad Denny and Jesse Korchuk, but it's redirected and recovered by Alex Pomerville. Pomerville behind net now, elects to carry it out. And carrying it through is Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt with a shot that is redirected. Instead becomes a pass. 
Ross, and that's going to go right to Battle Creek as it's picked off there nicely by number 88, Adam Howie. Battle Creek had an excellent opportunity, but just kind of frittered that one away. That one's going to come back down here to the right, or the left side of, I guess the right side. Jesse Gordachuk thought it was going to his left side, that's for sure. Uh, Jesse Gordachuk here in the goal for the Dashers, replacing Harley White earlier on in the game. Hildebrand unable to win that faceoff. Dangerously played in front of net there by Battle Creek. Now coming the other way with it is Johan Hoagland. Hoagland with nice stick work to get in from a shot from the point. Almost let up by Jacob Mullen playing with fire there off the stick of the electric Johan Hoagland. He could turn nothing into anything very quickly. And he was charging after that shot for the rebound too. Hoagland to Hildebrand. Over to Bormanis. Bormanis tries to find Hildebrand but just a little bit off thanks to some nice defense there by Adam Howie. Howie very electric on the defensive and offensive end so far tonight for Battle Creek. Bormanis had got himself away from the Battle Creek defense and frantically signaling for that puck. Had a good opportunity there. Coming the other way is Howie with some extended ice time here. It's going to be played behind by Jesse Gordachuk. Played all the way out to Nahair, who eventually finds Bormanis with a shot on net. It's swallowed up by Jacob Mullen. Love watching the way these Danville uh, offensive players are just kind of circling, waiting for the opportunity. And as soon as they get the puck moving down the ice, they've got a full head of steam and able to beat the Battle Creek defenders to the puck. Face off on the offensive end for Danville, defensive end for Battle Creek. Going to be won by Danville and controlled here with 134 left to go in the second period. Nay hair on it as he carries around net all the way around. On it now is Hoggood. Hoggood tries to fire it in there to number 91, Jesse Nayer. Another good opportunity for the Dashers, but just barely missed connecting on the pass. And working it through the middle zone here is Danville. Gullo on the other end of it. Gullo carries behind net. And pops one out. It's collected by Murray. Murray fires a shot. It's caught up somewhere in the arms of Levi Armstrong and Co. As Battle Creek sorts that one out. Now fighting for it along the boards. Battle Creek wins it. Would have had a breakaway almost through Moscow. No such luck. Murray playing that like on the hop. Zylak will be the penalty of tripping as the victim comes down with a delayed penalty. Zylak holds on to it. Fred Hine going to have to touch this one up and quick if they want to do anything with this delayed penalty. Now on the other end of it was poor man as Fred Hine finds himself open. Hine with a shot. Off the redirect from Mullins, but no such luck. Mullins sprawled out on the line to try and stop anything on the ground after he let up that rebound. And nicely done as he does the trick. Now, Battle Creek going to have to go into a penalty kill here with 23.2 seconds left in the second period. Danville will start, start the third period with a little bit of a power play time. With the delayed penalty, Gordachuk came off the ice. Fred Hine was the extra skater, and he almost got his money's worth out of that uh, ice time. Yeah, he did. And quick thinking there, Fred Hine racing back to keep that one in the delayed offside, give you a little bit more penalty time coming out of the break. Gordachuk, the first one to that one. Hine passes over to Hildebrand. Hildebrand skates across the blue line. Hildebrand fires over. Holding it on the left wing is Danville. Coming with it now on the other side. That's Nigel Slade. And finding the ice there. I do believe on the ground was Slade. That Dasher player got that tripped up. And then uh, took a stick to the face inadvertently as he was sprawled out on the ice. That was Christopher Formanis is going to find his way off the ice. But now they're all going to find their way off the ice. And Gordachuk and Palmerville, the last two to come out as Gordachuk says hello to Tony Lampo. A lot of relationships built in this league. A lot of friendships, guys that have played together for years and guys that start to like each other after playing against one another a couple of times. Very interesting. 
interesting discussion there after the period. Nigel Slade complaining about being cross-checked along the boards and getting an explanation from the referees. We've already seen a decent amount of penalty time so far tonight. We've got two penalties on Battle Creek and or actually, excuse me, we have two goals for Battle Creek and four for the Dashers. We need to refresh our feet here from the box. Current penalty time totals, we have seen one, two, three, five penalties on Battle Creek and three on Danville. That sounds much more correct. We've seen a lot of hooking, a lot of tripping. Either way, a lot of goals. Seven goals here through two periods in Danville. Five of those for the home side Dashers who look to capitalize on some momentum gained this past weekend. It was a split with Watertown, but a very, very good Watertown team was on a 10-plus game winning streak. You come into their turf, knock them down a peg in a close one-goal game. Now, you're back at home. You struggled a little bit on the footing, but you found your ice, you found your home, and now you're on the right foot. Very impressive win last Friday night, 2-1 to one over Watertown. Gordachuk playing a magnificent game in the goal. And the team having to overcome bus trouble on the trip to Watertown. They didn't get there on time, but they certainly uh, took advantage once they did get there. Yeah, that's kind of what it's all about. Especially in the FPHL, you really, really have to adjust and make sure you can overcome these troubles. And I mean, it's going to happen with any team. There's travel delays at any level. And as teams start to travel further and further away here in this ever-growing league, as we saw this past week with two new expansion teams announced, it's going to be tough. One new expansion team. A lot of rumors, though. A lot of rumors. And I have seen on, uh, shall we say, the, uh, the hockey Twitter that there's talk of even more expansion in the next couple of years. And I've heard rumors that we might see as many as 16 teams. I would not be surprised. Uh, a lot of very ambitious owners, a lot of very ambitious heads of programs wanting to have a spot here in the growing FPHL. A new rebranded league this year, this year and uh, restructured. It has been a great season so far. There is a ton of talent on not just the Dashers, not just the Rumblebees who have struggled a little bit, but still look really good at times, but in the league as a whole. Very impressed that they put an emphasis on getting more of this open ice play and a much more skilled play in this league than we've seen the last couple of years. And that's what you need to develop players for the next level. You know, I know fans love to see a good fight. Hey, who doesn't love to see a good hockey fight? But when you get these players in the open ice getting a chance to show what they can do, that's how they're going to get recognized and get a chance at the next level. And I'm very, very impressed with the improvement that I'm seeing league-wide in the Federal uh, Prospect Hockey League this year. Very impressed with the product that's out there. Uh, and I love being able to watch the games on YouTube this year from all over the league. It's been a lot of fun catching up with a lot of different teams that we didn't get to always see in the past until they came here to Danville. Yeah, it was a very tough situation, and we're glad that a lot of technical uh, adaptions and improvements have happened in the offseason here. And another improvement in the offseason, the Dashers brought in Coach Ray Trombley. We're a little bit more into the season here. Dennis, what do you think is going through Coach Ray's mind now? You've got a little bit of momentum from the weekend, a what some would call a favorable matchup here at home against Battle Creek, and a couple of tough games against Port Huron coming up this weekend. Yeah, I asked Coach uh, earlier tonight before the game, after warm-ups, I asked him if we've seen sort of where the league is, and if Carolina and Watertown have sort of distanced themselves from the rest of the pack, and he says no. He says yes, the record suggests that, but if you look at the games that they've played, Carolina's dropped again to Danbury, mm -hmm. and Watertown got beat by us last week. And one of the biggest things in dealing with this league, we're seeing it already, is dealing with call-ups, and that's something that teams like Carolina, after last year's stellar record-breaking performance, is going to see a lot of. And the Dashers have faced more injuries than the average team in the league this year. And it's, everybody's going to have injuries, but we got some of the key players out, and that really hurts. Yeah, it really hurts, especially when behind us you see uh, the group of players 
players walking by, usually every intermission kind of roaming, talking to fans, hanging out during the game. When they go down to the box, that group has steadily grown over the start of the year. <laughs> it's unfortunately grown, and it's a lot of the starters, a lot of the guys who would be key members of the defense and the offense that are not out here skating. Yet, the Danville Dashers still putting a very competitive team on the ice, and being able to take that long road trip last week to Watertown and get the split really was impressive. I was very pleased to see that. Big growth for the team. When you have a new coach come in and a lot of different new players that have come in as well, you kind of wonder how long it's going to take for everybody to mesh together. But that hasn't been the problem. It's just been a little consistency throughout the game. And I think you're going to see that more and more as the season wears on. I love this offense because Coach Ray's got these guys always looking for the opportunity. And you see them circling and waiting and getting the momentum going. They're a fun team to watch. Yeah, absolutely. A couple updates here from around the league. A penalty-ridden game, it would appear, between the Danbury Hattricks <laughs> and the Elmira Enforcers. And speaking of fighting, the last play recorded here with 13 minutes and 52 seconds gone in the third period. They fight, so you gotta love that. It came off of a slashing, though, from two different players. So you know there's probably a good reason behind that in the long run. Over in Columbus, down in Georgia, the River Dragons up on the Menor Icebreakers. No T, remember, just Menor. 3-1 to one here in the third. And in the other leagues, those are the only games going on here on this Wednesday. Coming up on Thursday, a Thursday night game on Thanksgiving. We're going to have Battle Creek traveling all the way down to Carolina. That's a long, hard road trip from here. Let me be the first to tell you. That's going to be a long, long trip for these guys. Leaving here tonight after a tough game and going all the way to Carolina for some very tough games. Yeah, indeed. Well, coming up also this weekend, they'll be staying in Carolina, thankfully, so hopefully they can at least maybe settle down, have a nice Thanksgiving meal, and uh, be together, you know, as the Rumpies go down and take on Carolina on the weekend. Coming up this weekend on Saturday, the Dashers are playing host of Port Huron before they play again on Saturday, and I do believe Friday and Saturday, actually. No, Friday in Port Huron, Saturday in Danville, a home-and-home, home, per se. Well, we are sitting here. We'll be back in just a little while. We're going to take a break here as the Dashers come back out with the Rumblebees for the third period. Right now, we're going to take a little break. We'll be back with some updated scores from around the league from right now and maybe some shot totals and kind of goings on in the game here tonight. Not too late to get down to the David S. Palmer right now. I bet you get a discount if you come out now.
Well, as the players make their way back onto the ice, we're here at the David S. Palmer Arena, downtown Danville, 55 seconds until the third period can rightfully begin. Nathan Martin is out there. He's got an impactful game tonight for Battle Creek. Battle Creek started off really well, tying and even leading the Dashers two times. The Dashers score four straight goals here in the second period in order to take the lead by five to two. Fred Hine, Jesse Nair, Tanner Hildebrandt, and Fred Hine again, as well as Tanner Hildebrandt getting the lone goal for the Dashers in the first period. Those are your goal scorers here tonight. And the other side, Battle Creek's goal scorers, Tony Lampo and Shay Carey. Shay Carey, a name you'll know if you watched the FPHL last season. Total domination by the Dashers in that second period. Not only 4 nothing on the scoreboard in that period, but outshot Battle Creek 20-7. Unbelievable. A man of shots on goal there in the second period. Noteworthy performances tonight. Fred Hine with four points, two goals, two assists. Tanner Hildebrandt with three, two goals, one assist. No Gordie Howe hat tricks just yet. No fights on the night. Two assists now from newcomer Christos Bormanis, as well as an assist from fellow newcomer Nigel Slade. Been very impressed with the newcomers. Nigel Slade working really hard on some of those penalty kills and also working pretty hard behind the net to get some opportunities. Can we see a hat trick tonight? We could see. Technically, there is a pretty decent chance that we could see not one, but two, actually. Considering the way this game's been going, Fred Hine already should have a hat trick, by all means. Might even possibly have a six-point performance if it weren't for a few unlucky puck bounces along the way. And so, yeah, I'd say the odds are pretty good as we go along the line here at the David S. Palmer Arena. A great move by Coach Ray Tremblay early in the game, pulling Harley White, who was just having one of those nights where nothing could go right. Ever since uh, Kordachuk came into the net, that settled the uh, Danville defense down, and they have been totally dominant since. Slight delay here as we start the third period. Off-ice officials, on-ice officials all getting a little discussion in. Danville once again going to start this period with a 1 minute and 36 second power play. I have a feeling we're going to see Danville cash in here on this power play. you got to think that the odds are fairly good on that happening. They've looked really good on the power play so far tonight. Now coming out onto the ice, the Dashers win that faceoff. Coming around here, it's oh, onto the boards there went Palmerville. A nice hit delivered there by number 21, Malcolm Xander. Dashers control this one on the power play. Fresh ice, Ted Hine on the point. Hine throws one in, almost picked up by Hildebrandt. No such luck. It's only going to get as far as Alex Palmerville, though. Into the crease there go the Dashers. And coming around with it here, it's going to get out to number 39, Nigel Slade. Slade carries it past Hine, dumps it up for Hine. And that one's going to come back to number 61 there, Christers Bormanis. Bormanis to Hine. Hine with a slap shot off the pads of Jacob Mullen. I thought he had a beat. Now coming along with it, Hine in front of the net almost finds number 39, Nigel Slade there. Hine carries it around the back of the net. Hine out to Christers Bormanis. Bormanis over to Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt with a lot of open ice. You don't want to give him that much. He'll fire a rocket off the slap shot. At the best, it hits him in the ankle. Coming around with it now, passing through Bormanis with some nice stick work. Almost finds himself open, but his stick gets caught up behind him. 24 seconds left on the penalty. Slade with a nice deke there to open up a little space. Just a little bit too sloppy to catch the puck. Slide again, fires cross, tries to find Hyde. Instead, Palmerville whiffs on a shot. Might have had an opportunity there. Instead, it's Battle Creek getting a change. No offside there. The Dashers do a nice job as Nigel Slade drags the toe. Slade 
Tate brings it back to Hine. Almost tipped out there by number 12, Tony Lampo. Instead, it's going to be eventually find its way to Lampo here. Penalty's over. 18-15 left here in the third period. Palmerville coming around with it. And it's fired on front of net. George Jesse Kordachuk does a nice job sealing the five hole and not letting that one through. That came off the stick of number 88, Adam Howie, who's had the responsibility for a lot of Battle Creek's offensive opportunities so far tonight. Kordachuk has been so tough on those first chances all season long. Now coming along with it, Danville recovers. That one's loosely fired over the boards. It's going to be a delayed offside on Battle Creek. Instead, it's Patrick Salak picking it up. Gullo laying chase there. The number seven, Vinny Susi. Dashers do just enough to disrupt that play and keep the puck in the offensive zone. No regroup needed. Gullo down to the ground there. Zalak, Salak going to get it on the other end. And Tessarero going to try and make a play for this one. He does. Indeed brings it back, finds Nick Gullo. Winning all the battles on the boards again. Gullo forced off that one, but for the better, he's got a quicker route to the puck on the end. He tries to find Nahair. Nahair, no such luck at getting that one through. Coming down the other way is Adam Howie. That one's shot in, but it's going to be redirected off the skate of Battle Creek. A wide open shot there on the side. Kordachuk doing a nice job to slide over to it. Nini fires down the number 12 back there, Tony Lampo. Lampo's going to end up with his own rebound here. In front of that one was number 91, Christopher Bermanis on that one, 61. Coming back to grab this one is Logan Hoggood. Hoggood behind the net as he deeks his way through two defensemen there, or offensemen for Battle Creek. This one's going to get all the way down to Baraka. Baraka going to settle it in the corner, brings it back. A shot on goal finds Jacob Bullock, who covers it up with a pad. A little bit of extra creature in front of the net. And it is easily sought to there by the refereeing staff. Kudos. Good opportunity there for the Dashers. But Mullen again. You know, it sounds funny to say about a goalie that's given up five goals tonight. But this could be about eight or nine to two right now. Mullins come up big on a few really good shots by the Dashers. Now bringing it down is the Dashers into their own defensive zone. That one's going to be sought after there by Mullen. Dashers in the offensive zone. Baraka fires a shot that's wide right of the net. That one almost tripped up by Xander. No such luck. It finds Murray who comes back down the ice. On the other end of it is Jacob Mullen. Mullen tried to do too much the last time he had the opportunity. That time lets his defenseman take the puck out. Daniel almost able to get off this one now. It's Carl Manson. Manson with a shot. Almost finds the back of the net, but it's wide right of Gordachuk. Coming down now, it's uh, Tesserero, Baraka, and Murray. On the other end of this one, it's going to be Christopher Bormanis that ends up tracking back and dumping it off to the Danville defense. Brad Denny also out there. And Denny picks a pass right through the mid zone. Danville with a shot on and it's a goal. It's a goal. That's Christopher Bormanis with his third point of the night here for the Dashers in his first home game as a Dasher. Dashers somehow ended up with about three or four guys in front of the net. And Battle Creek doing nothing to clear out the front of the net. And it was just a matter of time before the puck found the stick and then found the back of the net. Poor man is having a great night on the offensive zone so far for Danville. Looked really good here as Danville goes ahead 6-2 with 15.26 left to go in the game. Down now is Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt trying to make a quick another score as he settles one down for a backhanded shot. Doesn't get as far. He tries to get his own rebound. He loses it a little bit, but ends up recovering it. A nice foot pass there. Fred Hine has a shot on that. Pomerville going to end up with this one. Pomerville with a shot. Jacob Mullen doing a great job at settling that one down. As the Dashers had several wide open opportunities to put one back to back within seconds of that last goal. Once again, Tanner Hildebrandt making the play with his great stick handling. First attempt to get the puck out in front of the net didn't work, and he didn't give up. He kept scrubbing the, that puck off the boards until 
they found an opening in front of the net, and they almost cashed it again. Dangle out shooting Battle Creek 44 to 15 after that last shot here. An offensive onslaught from Danville. It's pumped in there by Nick Golo. Ending up on the other end of it is Jesse Dayhair, who ends up tucking it away. Snuck in the five hole that time. Another goal from Danville puts them up.
Danville recovering after the shot there that was deflected by Will Harvey. Oh, and almost open that shot there for Fred Hine looking for the elusive hat trick here. Now coming down is Howie. Penalty is over. Howie there into the corner goes Tony Lampo. Lampo and Howie, two of the uh, bright spots here on the night. Going to chase this one down as Harvey's going to have to come out and get this one. That one might be a delayed game. It is not. It was tipped up off the stick of Will Harvey. Instead, it's going to be a face-off here, and looks like Tanner Hildebrand is eager to get it underway. He's ready and waiting at the center circle over there on the left of Will Harvey. Massive shift changes here for both sides as I... Are the Battle Creek guy going to the box? Yes, we are. Oh, we are. We're going to get a... I don't know what it would be, actually. It might actually be going back for a delay of game as Alves is going to serve it for Will Harvey. They had originally waved that off. So it wasn't even on my mind there. That's yeah, I think it was definitely a delay game penalty. You know, you give the benefit of the doubt that it gets tipped up to the goalie, and it's tough to come off the bench like Harvey's done, and you're prone to something like that happening almost in the end. A nice stick there from number 12, Tony Lampo. He's been very active as a two-way center so far for Battle Creek. Hoagland on the point now. Hoagland fires it behind, and that one takes a weird bounce off the side. And middle part of the board and jumps over the net. I play. That was a very peculiar bounce that time. We've had a lot of very strange bounces tonight go both ways. And this one's going to actually come back into the offensive zone for Danville. I'm not quite sure how, as that was rocketed up over the boards by Danville. It was a weird bounce, but it was still out of play. Anyway, we're going to bring that back down into the offensive zone for Danville. On it was Tessarero. He loses out there to Adam Howie. Tessarero on it now looking for a slot pass. Barakov on the side point. Bring it out to Hoagland. Hoagland reacts back and fires. It's redirected into the net by Levi Armstrong. Yeah, Levi, very opportunistic there. Getting the tip. But what a blast from the point by Hoagland. And that's the kind of thing he brings out onto the table. He got shaken up a little bit earlier. You almost feel poetic justice that he comes back out and gets a beautiful assist there off the stick of Levi Armstrong. And how about Tessarero picking up the perfect pass there to the point from behind the crease? Working hard, you would think. You know, you're up five on a power play. And these guys working like they're down one. Very, uh, very aggressive going after the score there. And they were able to cash in. Then he finds Palmerville. Palmerville pushes it up the glass there to Nick Gumbo. It's going to find the stick of Ethan Bush Anderson instead. Now coming the other way with it is Maxime Noskov. Anderson. Back to try and find Noskov. It's going to be waved off on the icing there as that's collected by Jesse Gordichev. That one was tipped off on the way through. Then he finds Slade as Slade loses that one to Bush Anderson. Bush Anderson over to number 24, Mark Steele. And it looks like Noskov and Slade tied up there a little bit on the boards. Palmerville on it now. And that one's going to be dumped into the corner for Danville. Going to get a shift change. Out comes Christos Bormanis. Christos Bormanis. That was like the best of both worlds there. You got the fresh legs that you needed. And Battle Creek helping you out with an icing. Yeah, you're going to get even more fresh legs, actually, off of that, funny enough. Murray out there, as well as Logan Hoggood, another recent acquisition for Danville. Fred Hine out there. Tanner Hildebrand in the faceoff circle. Hildebrand loses out on that one. It's only going to get as far down the ice, though, as Hoggood, who recovers and gets it to Fred Hine. Hine takes a pass to Murray. As Murray carries it on to open ice, Murray with a pass across the crease. Not good enough, but Hildebrand with quick legs to get to that one as the Dashers regroup and Battle Creek takes the puck behind net. Slade with that one, he passes to Hildebrand. Hildebrand throws it down behind the net to Hine, who can't touch it up. As Battle Creek struggling to get a hold on the puck whatsoever. That shot from Hildebrand is going to be sticked out and redirected out of the net. A souvenir for a young fan. Or an old fan, we don't judge. Will Harvey just trying to uh, protect his net any way he could. He was getting attacked there and just uh, was seemed pleased. 
that the puck out of play. Meany behind the net now. And coming around with it. And ends up with it again after a weird redirect there from Battle Creek. And carrying it around here as the Dashers literally swarm on them. Oh, a huge hit laid there. And I'm not sure it was fully intentional from Murray onto Zander. Danville getting an opportunity, but Battle Creek can have a chance if they take numbers. It's lost there by Battle Creek, though. Good active stick by the Dashers again. Now pass up, trying to find Sander. Instead, finds Danville. That one is shot all the way down play. Over the boards of the offensive zone for Danville. <laughs> looks like we're going to get the under 10 media timeout. Yeah, it looks like he played the 8-iron when he should have played the wedge on that one. Yeah. Well, either way, when I play it, I usually just drop it into a tree. <laughs> I usually find the sand. Yeah, I feel that. Pour the water. I can't go into my ball bag. Boy, nice to see the Dashers take total command of this game. They did so in the second period and just pouring it on here in the third. Battle Creek came out strong to start this one, but ever since that switch of goaltenders, Total domination by the Danville Dashers from that point on. Well, and the thing is, uh, in the long run for Battle Creek, it is about baby steps at this point. You know, you uh, need a new coach. Uh, you lost your coach earlier on into the season here, as well as getting some new additions. You're bringing in players left and right. One of them, Kenny Alex, you're going to look to build through guys like Adam Howie, Maxime Noskov, Shea Carey, another experienced vet. You know, you get these guys in, some performances like we saw from Jacob Mullen in the first period, you're going to have a chance in this league on a given night, any given night for that matter. Yeah, it's tough to build a team from scratch. They've done a great job at Battle Creek, and next year this is going to be a strong club. Yeah, you got to think so, and it'll be a year older and a year more experienced, and that's what kind of counts. Oakland fires one from the point. It's almost the same play with Armstrong. Ends up with a stick in the glove there of Will Harvey. Levi was just sitting there watching that pass come towards him, and he was already starting to celebrate, but boy, just uh, couldn't quite get the stick on the puck that time, but another great play by the Dashers. Now, earlier this year, Danville won 7-1 to against Battle Creek. This 8-2 to score would tie that for their biggest win against Battle Creek in the franchise history, which is admittedly fairly short. A shot there from Battle Creek. That was a rocket off the stick of Tony Lampo. He could fire a few of those. And Gordachuk found that puck and just cradled it against his body and still having troubles fighting the puck. He's a little... That one went right into his stomach, you gotta think. I don't think he got much on that other than stomach. Looks like he's gonna be okay to go, though. It's better your stomach than your head. That's what I always say. Hildebrandt wins the face off there for Dan Hill. Oh, a close drop. Fred Hine taking him down already on the ground. I can't see who it is. His number's not showing. Fred Hine swinging. You don't see him drop it off. And you got to think that was a crowd-pleasing moment there. As Fred Hine ends up on the bottom of the pile. It's actually Nathan Margus. Fred Hine, Nathan Margus going to the box. And Fred Hine doing a lot for this crowd. Nathan Margus, a guy to let him go at it. And that was a clean fight, a, a fair and nice fight as well. Nobody really suffered too bad from that one, but it's just enough to appease the crowd here tonight. That action went from zero to 60 instantly. It was very quick, and I saw nothing leading up to that. And that's kind of what you want in one of those fights. You don't want to let them know, hey, we're going to go. You want it just to happen. It was natural, and thus we have our first fight tonight. Another box ticked off of the uh, fans' wish list for tonight. It's also the completion of Fred Hines' Gordie Howe hat trick. <laughs> I'm a quick one to point those out. That's my favorite play in hockey. <laughs> and believe it or not, Gordie Howe only had two of those in his entire career. Sometimes that's all you need. <laughs> Battle Creek going to 
win this one back as they dump the puck down. Kornichuk going to collect it from what will be a win in his scorebook, actually. Hildebrand does a nice job of getting on the other end of that one and keeping it in play. On and now is Barakov. We're going to have a penalty here. An unnecessary one, that's for sure. It was a hook. And it looks like it's going to go against Battle Creek, if any indication is correct. I believe you are correct. Sure looks like Nathan Margitz was getting lonely and needed some company over there. And going to the box, I do believe, would be Jimmy Philbin. It's hard to tell because he shares a number with Xander as well. Malcolm Xander. That one's going to be shot behind as the Dashers have a minute and 53 of power play with 8 minutes and 23 seconds left to go in the game. Coming around with it was Murray. Murray back on it here. He flicks this one down into the corner. It looks like Harvey's going to get on the other end of that one dangerously, though, as chasing it was, I do believe, Troy Murray himself. Trying to complete the self-pass there. Very cool uniforms for these Battle Creek Rumblebees, but my suggestion for next year, lose the stripes on the back for the announcers, please. Yes, please, for our sake. And that one almost found an open net just off the redirect there of Harvey and still able to keep that one out. Gordichuk looking for a long stretch pass. He's eyeing Nick Gullo there. His routes were cut off. He's got a couple of assists this year, so he was looking to cash in again. They are carrying it in. And passing it down into the slot there, carrying it around, I do believe, is Nick Gullo who's thrown into the boards pretty hard. Gullo with it again here. Coming on the other end, Nigel Slade also out there. Gullo will not stop fighting for this puck, even outsized there against Gino Mini. He's given away about six inches at least, and maybe about 60 pounds, but he's winning the battles. Looks like we're going to have a penalty called here once again. This might just be tiredness turning into sloppiness. <laughs> yeah, this time I think Danville is going to get somebody going to the sin bin. Tony Lampo's stick was being cradled across the ice under the feet of Nigel Slade. <laughs> Slade had a good night in his first home stand as a dasher. They're looking for big things after him after he was acquired via trade this week. And the dashers putting on an offensive onslaught and a lot of that thanks to new players on the team as well. I think we'll actually have one of them as a third or second star of the game. We'll talk about that as we get a little bit closer. Still plenty of hockey left here. 40 seconds of 4 on 4. A minute and 49 after that. And you can do the math. That's a minute and 9 second difference or so. Actually, no, it's not. They didn't pay me to do math, Dennis. Let me tell you. 6.56 here left to go in the third period. 8 to 2, Danville. I'll get my abacus ready and uh, see if I can help you out. <laughs> Big fan of the abacus. That one's carried in nicely there. And that bringing it in once again was Adam Howitt. And that shot uh, got up high enough to hit the Remax Ultimate banner here in the arena. I'm, I'm not grading the height of shots based on the positioning of the uh, sponsors' banners. Sometimes that's all you can do. Danville recovers off the face-off. That one is fired down. That's not going to be an icing as it got back enough to A.J. Tesserero, who was in hot pursuit. Barakov tries to carry it through, gets tripped up a little bit. Barakov's still on the puck somehow. And that one is actually going to find Tesserero, who coughs it up once again. Coming around now is Battle Creek. They're going to have a three-on-two if they move fast. Manson whiffs on a shot, but ends up firing the second one. Beautiful stop by Gordachuk. And he was faked out there. It does a great job to get some pads to that one. Tesserero electing the shift change. Christers for man is coming on. Patrick Zillak. That did not look like Battle Creek was going to get a shot out of that. But all of a sudden, that shot was a, was a rocket. Zillak tripped up but keeps on it. He passes a nice pass there. Almost Christopher Roman is getting his second of the night. Battle Creek coming back now. A lot of breaks here from both sides as tired legs prevail. Now, love four-on-four four hockey. 
Bomberville brings it through and almost finds Zillak, but no such luck. It's going to come right back to Bomberville behind the net here. He's going to almost lose this one, but come back onto it, trying to find a breaking Zillak or Zillak there, but doesn't do it. Obviously, no icing. We are in a four on four situation. A big hit there. Christmas Borman is going to end up with it along the post. Jack Gavin Strength. Uh, it's coming down now, Bormanis. Bormanis to Murray, and Murray fires it over to Zalak, who fires one on. It's nicely saved there by Will Harvey. Battle Creek having some offensive opportunities here late. Gorbachev keeping him out of the net. There's a reason he is goal number one. Nair fires a nice spinning oh. shot. Oh, it's swallowed up by Will Harvey. I'm not even sure he knew that he had it in his glove. What a beauty there by Nair. Almost has a nice spinning goal. Spinorama move, almost cashed in. You know, the actual Spinorama is illegal in the NHL. Fun fact, too many risks of people getting cut by skates. It's still legal in Russia, though. <laughs> I'm an encyclopedia of random useless information. Coming back around here, Danville in the offensive zone. Colo going to end up with behind the net here. It's laid out there. Putin wouldn't worry about a few uh, cuts and bruises. <laughs> It's Nick Dolo in the center of the ice. Murray going to have a little bit of space here. He cuts through. Loses the puck, though. That's Battle Creek able to recover a nice deep there by number 27, John Champlain. Getting out there. 425 left in yeah, this one. Maxime Nostoff pushes one down. It's going to get as far as Nigel Slade. Nick Dolo passes it off here. Jesse Nair. And down all the way to Will Harvey, who passes it off to his defenseman and says, Get up the ice, please. Coming up now, number 10, Maxime Noskov. Noskov with a nice carry, able to fend off two, if not three, dashers on that one. Gorbachev with a weird bounce off the side rail there. And a shot on net is well ride. And still not going to fight for it, but not able to get it. Coming on now is Pesorero trying to push this one away. Uh, Dasher loses a stick, but they gain the puck here. As Lack comes into the zone, he's going to have to get rid of that puck. He was stumbling. A lot of back and forth action here as we head down the stretch of the third period. That one's going to be an offside, but just barely on Zillak, who was caught up behind the play a little bit there. Much to the relief of Battle Creek. Even though this one is all over except for the stat line with 3.33 to go and the Dashers up six, both teams continuing to hustle. A nice applause there for Fred Hine as he makes his way back over to his bench after spending some time in the sin bin. You know, he took about half of his time there off of the chance of getting a hat trick in order to take that fight and pump the crowd up. That's a team guy, if I say so myself. There you go. Now, you asked if we were going to see a hat trick, but right now, the only hat trick is recording now. A nicely hit shot there from Xander. Finds Gorbachev's pad. Gorbachev does away with it, and that one's going to be poked down the ice. Will not get far enough to be an icing. That's been Susie picks it up. Almost picked off there by Hildebrand. Instead, Battle Creek carries on. Palmerville pushing that one into the corner, giving himself some time. A strong hit there along the boards. A mutual collision, if I do say so myself. And that backhanded pass isn't going to be far enough to get the Dashers a defensive shift change here. Instead, Hildebrand's going to cause some chaos in the offensive zone. And it's recovered nicely by Battle Creek. Coming on is Alves and number 12, Tony Lampo. Lampo likes to send this one down to Gorbachev. Passes off to Barakov. That makes it as far as Hildebrand. Hildebrand has it now. Fred Hine, Hine, just left of the net. So close to stealing that hat trick. And the beat, but just misses the, the, on the right side of the goal. Tony Lampo really bringing it back here as Jesse Gorbachev has to save a shot off the pads and collects it in the end. Lampo has had a lot of great opportunities tonight, and you've got to think you want to build off of that going forward, not only in this year, in this part of the season, but further on. When you get a big guy that's also good with the stick, you got to try and keep him around. Very true. Boy, Hein, I thought he was going to cash in that time. Very unlucky not to. Just a, It's a game of inches. I know they say that about just about every sport, but so true. Just a little bit of an angle on the stick, and that one's in the back of the net easily. A balancing act there by Barakov or Tessarero to keep on his feet and keep the puck. 
Bandini now comes through as Battle Creek has a man in the slot. Not able to get the pass out, though. Now taking it is going to be Levi Armstrong. Brad Denny a little shaken up behind the play. He kind of had a, a blowout. Armstrong does a great job of creating an opportunity off that and almost provides a scoring opportunity for Danville. But a nice job there by Will Harvey getting back onto that. Gorchuk throws that one down the other side of the ice with his pads. And it's going to come behind his net now as Murray collects it. 136 left in the game here. 8 2 Danville in the third period. Tesserero coming through. Tesserero tries to slot a pass there through to Denny, but instead just finds McGinnis. Now coming on the other end of it is Danville. That's Murray with it behind the left side or the right side of the net. The left side if you're Jesse Gorchuk. Danville coming down with one more opportunity here. It's Brad Denny. And that one doesn't quite make it to Nate Hare. Instead, going to get it here is Nigel Slade. Slade passes it through to the point. It's redirected, though, by Battle Creek. Slade been carrying this puck around for a while. Very nicely. A shot from the point. Redirected and score. Beautiful shot. A beautiful play by the Dashers to cash in again. Jesse Nair gets another goal on the night. What a night he's having here in front of the home crowd. I love the way they just kind of kept working the puck around. Get it back to the point. Throw it towards the net and good things happen. And now the dash is up 9-2. to 9-2 to two in a game that quickly got away from Battle Creek there in the second period. And the Dashers haven't looked back since. It is now 9-2. to two. 52 seconds left to go in the game. We would assume, unless there is some craziness going on here. I would say I've seen Stranger, but I definitely have not. As we call Jesse Nair on the end of that one, Battle Creek might be okay just to sit back and dump this one around, play a little defense for the next 30 seconds. As a stretch pass there, almost caught on the end of Fred Hines' stick. Instead, the Dasher's going to collect this one behind their net. And Battle Creek still making a push here with 20 seconds left in the game. Now on it is Hildebrand. Hildebrand flips it down into the zone. That's going to be picked up by Tony Lampo fairly easily on the other end. Seconds left. Lampo holds it behind the net here. They might try one more push here. Nope, Lampo is going to wrap this one up. Skate around with the puck a little bit, and the Dasher fans are going to count this one down and go home happy here at David S. Palmer Arena. And uh, Thanksgiving Eve win for the Danville Dashers and Coach Ray Tremblay. A 9 to 2 victory here for the Dashers. Goals all around like an Oprah giveaway. You get a goal. You get a goal. You get a goal. No turkeys at all for the Danville Dashers tonight. They did a really good job of stuffing the net. Except for the ones that were thrown on the ice, those bowling pants. That's about it. Now as far as goal scorers go, we're going to get to our stars of the night. Hildebrandt and Hine both with the same stat total. I have a feeling Fred Hine might get the star for this one, though. Two goals, two assists for both Hildebrandt and Hine. Brad Denny with three assists on the night. An underrated defensive stat there. Nigel Slade also with three assists in his first game as a home dasher here. Christopher Borman is another three-point scorer. One goal, two assists. Jesse Mayer, two goals, one assist. And Nick Gullo with a goal and an assist. Jesse Mayer deserves another point for the best moves while saluting the crowd after the game as well. Oh, do we have a dancer on our hands? I was stat watching. He was doing a great job of strutting his stuff and saluting the fans with the stick. I love the enthusiasm from these Danville Dashers saluting their very enthusiastic fans win or lose here at the David S. Palmer Arena after a game. He definitely seems like a dancer. That's one thing I'll say. He's, he's got the vibe. He carries that vibe. Well, another vibe that was carried tonight, absolute dominance after about the first period in three minutes by the Danville Dashers. Borman is going to get the third star on the night here as we await the second and first. Should be a clean sweep for your Dashers tonight. You would think so. It's going to be Tanner Hildebrand getting the second, which means Fred Hine is going to get the first. Well deserved by Tanner, not only putting the points on the board, but hard work from start to finish. Always. And how about Christopher Formanis as well? Three points on his home debut as a dasher, and we, uh, we can't say enough about
about Mr. Fred Hine, the bearded wonder kid. Just an absolute talent, even considered maybe not coming back to hockey on the offseason. Just wasn't having a good time. Comes back, and man, this kid's got it all. We could see him at the next level before you know it. He is a talented offensive player. I think he's one of those players that as soon as he saw the coaching change here and saw the dedication of what the team was trying to do, all of a sudden, it seemed like a real good idea to come back and play for the Dashers again, and he is having a heck of a season. And sometimes that's all it takes. Fred Hine on the season, just incredibly impressive. The main goal-scoring threat on this Dashers team, and a lot of offense tonight, to say the least, for the Dashers against the Battle Creek Rumblebees. Early thoughts walking away from this game. Wake-up call by Coach Ray Tremblay to the team by pulling the goaltender early in this one. You saw a complete change in the way the team looked. I think the defense felt like they loved they, that they let Harley White down and that he was having to face the music for their lack of play. And as soon as they made that change, the team woke up and took over this game and dominated the way we expected them to. But the shot total that they put up tonight, impressive. I feel sorry for the Battle Creek goaltenders because they felt they, they faced an absolute onslaught of shots and quality shots all night long. They were worked, that's for sure. 54 shots on goal for Danville, opposed to 22 from Battle Creek. Not a great showing from Battle Creek, but there were some highlights there. You saw some good performances out of some guys. I mean, one of them, we saw Jacob Mullen put on a decent showing in the first period. That's a baby step there. Maxime Noskov, someone that catches the eye all the time. But, of course, we can't say enough. Adam Howey and Tony Lampo, two really talented players going forward. As for the Dashers, this kind of game can light a fire under you, Dennis, as you go forward into a tough weekend matchup, a home-and-home -home with Port Huron, a team that you have a great history with as well. That's going to be a good test for this team. Tonight was just kind of the warm-up act. Saturday night will be the main event. And you don't want to miss it if you're in the neighborhood. Come on out to the David S. Palmer Arena Saturday night for more Danville Dashers hockey action. And here's a fun fact for you. Fred Hine, 59 shots on goal already this season. In 40 games last season, he had 174. Wow. That's through 11 games. He's a fourth of the way to his game total and already over a third of the way to his shot total. What a talent. What a talent, Fred Hine. And what a talent. Danville Dashers look good tonight. We'll be back on Saturday for more here from the David S. Palmer Arena. Uh, for Dennis Michelson, I'm going to go rest my voice. Let me tell you. I'm Nate Williams, and we'll be back on Saturday as the Danville Dashers take on Port Huron in Military Appreciation Night. You've kept it all right here on the Danville Dashers YouTube channel. Have a good night, everybody.